welcome back. Today I want to do just a fun project with you. So I was at Starbucks the other day getting myself a treat and I saw these guys up front by the cashier and they were only four dollars and the cashier said this is the line that they're making out of the recycled plastic from the ocean pollution. So I was just excited, it's four dollars and it is just begging to be decorated with the Cricut. So that's what we're gonna do today from beginning to end. We are gonna go ahead and decorate this one. So let's get started. Okay, so for starters here, as we're still living in the travel trailer, I don't have a lot of my craft tools. So I don't have um, a ruler that works here. So I'm using this piece of yarn and measuring my design size, so around and up and down, so I get kind of a rough estimate on how big to make my design in the Cricut Design Space app so that it will nicely fit around my bottle. The nice thing about that bottle is that it's the same size around from bottom to top, unlike some of them, so it makes it a little bit easier. So here I'm going to start out by making a circle and I'm making it a little over two inches because that is the size of the emblem on the bottle and I want to make my design so it kind of works around that emblem. Okay, so I'm gonna find the right text, the right font here that I'm wanting. It might take me a minute. I have one in mind for the design that I'm doing. Okay, so as I'm looking for this font, um, so I've decided I want to make my design to be centered around um, a bee theme or beehive. So the property that we purchased we like to call the beehive as there is a lot of bees on it the first time we did a walkthrough. So I am making this bottle bee themed. Also, just because I think they're adorable and I love honeycomb. So I'm here's the font I'm using. Just gonna kind of throw some ideas out there. What I like about the Design Space app is you can change things up. Nothing's set until you actually go to make it. So it's a lot of trial and error. Um, if you haven't used it much, go ahead and just kind of play around on it makes it easy to figure out kind of what you like, what you don't like, and to learn the different, different parts in here. So right now I'm using a different font that I actually downloaded online. I think it's just kind of pretty. I like having the two different fonts combined here. So for the word kind, I'm going to go in here, go ahead in here and change the letter spacing to bring the letters closer together so that they actually connect. Now that the letters are connected, I'm actually going to do what's called welding. I'm going to weld them together. And what that does is when you go to have your machine cut them out, they will be one continuous cut instead of there being slices between the letters. So that just kind of helps to make the letters stick better onto your cup if they're all connected. So now I'm going to look here at some image ideas. So this is always a really fun part for me. I like to scan through the images searching for bees. I actually just really love this first one that came up. So I'm going to put that in in here to begin with and see what else I can find. So I'm going to also look at some honeycomb looking for kind of a nice simple idea that that will look good on my bottle. And go ahead in the comments below and tell me some of your favorite images that you find in Cricut Design Space. I do have an Cricut access, so I have am subscribed to a decent amount of them. So let me know what you've been using lately for your images. So I'm gonna just add a couple different things here to work with. I might not use them all. That's the fun part, just add in whatever, and we can always delete. Let's kind of get a design going, moving some things around. I'm actually going to duplicate this honeycomb because you 
can never have too much honeycomb. So let's add a couple of them and maybe a second bee, haven't decided if I want to use him or not for her. So let's rotate, give him a little bit of variety. So let's move these honeycomb so they kind of, I'm hoping they connect nicely. Okay, they do. Let's move them around to make a bit of a different shape. Not set on this. What if we go ahead here and flip this one horizontally? That is better. That is more visually appealing to me, but again, you do what you want. I'm just showing you a little bit of a tutorial on my thought process, how I go about making a design. So here we go. And what I just realized I forgot to do earlier, that's why this is a learn as we go process, is make the template for my bottle size. So if you remember, I measured out my bottle using the yarn. I want to make a rectangle that is that size as if it were a piece of paper that you would wrap around the bottle. So this is my working space, the right size for my project and I'm going to send it to the back so it's behind all of the images and make it a lighter color just so I can see what I'm working with better here. It doesn't really matter where it's at. And now we can see that my images right now are way too big for the bottle. Let's undo that so I forgot to lock it. I want the ratio to stay the same of the height to width so I'm going to lock it as I shrink it. Let's bring my design over. That circle, if you remember, we already measured out to be the correct size of the Starbucks logo, so we cannot change the size of that one. That needs to stay how it is, the just over two inches. Okay, this is the fun part. Again, playing around with where everything's going. But as you've noticed, I do make some mistakes as we go along, but the fun part is Cricut has an easy undo feature. So you just click on that if something's not working right and go back a couple steps. As anytime you're playing in a program that you haven't, well, I've used it a decent amount, but there's always something new to learn in a program. So mistakes happen we expected and you can just undo make sure you're saving as you go so you can work back a couple steps and get things placed just how you want them to look on your project so here we go again just kind of moving things around where I want them to go you haven't been able to tell by this point, I am fairly indecisive, but that's why I enjoy designing. Because you kind of have a little bit of creative freedom until your decisions are made and you are ready to go ahead and cut it. So I've moved a little bit here as you can tell. Um, I had to take a little pause to nurse the baby and get everybody happy. So here I am adding another image which is a dotted line. I just searched for dotted line and this is the one I liked the best. So I hit the show contour button and in that button you're able to kind of take away different parts of an image. So I took away the airplane so it was just the dotted line. Um, I could have found an image that was just the dotted line on its own to begin with, but as I was looking earlier, it was hard to find one that was the right shape of what I wanted, so I decided that airplane one was the best. I went ahead and unlocked the locked ratio button. I wanted to be able to change the height and width a little bit so it was not set. Okay, let's see. I'm liking what we have so far with this B. Is me trying to remember how to select multiple layers at a time in this app. I'm not as familiar with some of these features as I used to do it on a different system. 
but let's get creative. So I'm going to select all the layers I'm not wanting to work with right now and press that eyeball button, which means to hide the layer because I'm also going to detach these three honeycomb that I attached earlier because I forgot in the beginning I wanted to actually slice and cut that circle emblem out of the honeycomb so that when I go to make it later, that circle will be just an empty space, which is where the Starbucks emblem will be located. I don't want the honeycomb to overlap on top of it since it is already on the bottle and I am not removing it in any way. I need the honeycomb to work around the circle. So I should have done this to begin with. But again, when you're distracted, Working with little kiddos and day-to-day -day life, I completely forgot this very important step. So again, there's probably a way easier way to do this. Go ahead and comment below to help me out. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and make another circle here just because it's the first way I can think of to on the spot slice all three different layers of the honeycomb I have using again the slice feature which you can only use with two layers selected so I'm just slicing the circle out of the honeycomb so I'm doing this to all three layers of the honeycomb so in the end it will just be the circle emblem left so now I'm going back to all the layers that I have hidden using the eyeball and I am pressing it again to unhide them or make them show up. So here we are at my design. Now you can see that circle space cut out and let's go over to the Cricut. Also just side note, how cute is my Cricut? I used holographic vinyl and cut out all those shapes on another day. So here I'm gonna attach my black permanent vinyl to use. And because of travel trailer life and not having my craft room and everything here, I just have this one light stick mat available, which is why you saw it. the vinyl is peeling up from the mat as I tried the first time and had to press it on harder and stick it better. So basically I need to either clean this mat better, but um, more easily I need to actually just order some more mats from Amazon while I am in the moving process as there's many more crafts I'll want to do in the meantime before I am back in a house. So the each everyone's machines work a little bit different. For me I used the custom material setting on both and for the black I use the premium outdoor vinyl whatever setting with more pressure. It just seems to work best for me and my machine. And for the honeycomb, because it's a holographic vinyl, I used um, the holographic vinyl setting, again with more pressure. It just happens to work for me. I've heard some people have success with it and some don't. So um, whatever works for you. I really recommend before using some nicer vinyl like this holographic to do a test cut. I happen to know how this one works with my machine, so I didn't need to. But do a test cut a little small corner um, to make sure that your setting and your pressure settings are correct so you don't have to waste a big sheet of it trying it out. You don't want to have it try to make a big design and then realize it did not cut all the way through. because We've probably all done that at some point and it is such a sad time trying to decide if you can help it out exacto knife the rest of the way through or if you have to redo your design. So avoid those issues by just doing a test cut if it's not a vinyl that you're used to using. These are some of my go-tos, so I am comfortable with them and knowing what, what my Cricut needs to do. So here I happen to just use an extra piece of black vinyl I had laying around, so it was not the right size. So I'm cutting off these extra pieces to use in the future for other projects. So now I'm going to peel design here so you can see using the extra pressure always helps it to peel really nicely for me and for it to peel all the way through 
and then we'll get to the detailed weeding here. Um, side note, looking at the tool that I'm using, my weeding tools and everything are in storage during this move, but at the Target um, Bullseye Playground, dollar section, whatever you want to call it, I found a three-pack recently of tools that are kind of like knockoff Cricut tools. It had this one and then um, some tweezers and a scraper with it. And they are working definitely good enough in the meantime. Well, I don't have all my other supplies here. I think it was $3 for them. And then also I'm using a little tool to kind of hold the small weeded pieces. Some people call them nail polish holders. Um, they have multiple uses. So here's my weeded projects. Another side note here, I was intending to weed out all of the honeycombs, but I actually love the look of some of them being left full, filled in. So although they're cut out as if they're supposed to be removed, I decided to only weed about half of them. So we will have some left as is. If I thought about this while making the project, I would have left them like welded together in design space, left them solid honeycombs. But I think it will still work fine just having them not not weeded out and if one of them scrapes up in the future doesn't really matter because it will just then become one of the empty honeycombs. So not actually a big deal. So here I'm just gonna go ahead, I cut the right size of transfer tape. I'm using a sheet of transfer tape that came with I've had this one laying around for a while, but I think just came with a general premium vinyl set that I had around. I'm going to just kind of scrape it on because I don't actually know where my scraper is at the moment. I'll go ahead and use, use my fingernail, take off that dollar store polish, and get everything rubbed on here so the pieces stick well to, to the transfer sheet and nothing's left behind. We'll get all the little pieces set here. I did have all those black vinyl pieces attached as well in the design space, so they came out like that instead of separate next to each other. I wanted them to maintain the positioning. So now we're moving on to the holographic vinyl. I'm going to go ahead and use the transfer sheet that came with this holographic vinyl from Amazon because I know it's going to be strong the right right stickiness and everything for this type of vinyl. If you don't have transfer tape around, no worries. A lot of different things work. I've heard of people finding different things from the Dollar Tree that work as transfer tape. Um, sometimes I'll use just good old blue painter's tape as long as I kind of take away a little bit of the stickiness, like put it on my jeans once. The blue tape works pretty well for your typical permanent vinyl outdoor vinyl, whichever you want to call it. But for this holographic, I want to just use what it came with. It probably came with it for a reason. It's probably made just for it. If not, again, there's a lot of creative ways to get, get things to work. So I'm just going to cut this to be the right size for the honeycomb. Okay, here. I am so excited to get back to my craft room someday once I have one established in the new house so I will know where all of the tools, materials are. But for now this, this totally works in the meantime. Okay, so I'm just going to stick this one on and rub it on nice and well. so. I hope you get to enjoy my little double jointed fingers. I'm just going to rub this on so all of the honeycomb are picked up. And it is time to look at the bottle. Okay, what do I want to start with? Let's see here. I think I'll just peel off. I like to flip my projects over and peel from the white or the backing of the vinyl 
off instead of healing from the transfer tape. It just seems to be better for me. I know everyone likes things a little bit differently, but I definitely have a lot more success peeling or backing off and having the design be transferred than the other way around. So give that a try and see what you think. Let me know. So I'm going to start here with the honeycomb because it is the design that has a very set spot, well, kind of. The circle, if you remember that we cut out earlier, needs to be around that Starbucks logo. So I like to get up, so I'm kind of above it looking down. I am a fairly short individual, so it really helps me to see what's going on and keeps the bottle more still than if I'm trying to do it at an angle. So I'm starting the application by making sure those pieces around the emblem all line up to just kind of touch the edge of it. I don't really care where the rest of the honeycomb go as long as those edges work there. The only thing I was looking at when I was lining it up is making sure that all the honeycomb would end up somewhere on the bottle so that I wasn't going off on the top or the bottom. And that's all that really mattered. I like doing designs like this, especially while I don't have a ton of time while the kids are running around because there isn't really a set spot that things have to go in. I can kind of mix it up as I go, whereas some designs that I've seen or that I do that are more intricate, like flowers that need to line back up on the other side, for example, you need to be way more careful with the placement of what you're doing, or it can easily be out of line on the other side. So I like that this design is not a complete um, perfect image that has to line back up on the other side or anything like that. It kind of just has some freedom. Honeycomb can go where they want, just like they look like in nature. They can have a little variety. So I just, my only goal is lining up with the circle and lining up so nothing was going off the top or bottom. So I'm just going to press things on nice and hard here. I won't show you all of that as it you've experienced, it takes some time. But just making sure everything is nice and stuck and that there are no air bubbles underneath any of the honeycomb. Those are easy to kind of scrape and get the bubbles out. Um, if you have a bad one that's just not coming out, you can always try poking it with a, a little needle and then rubbing it, try to get some of the air out. These actually worked pretty well, so I'm going to go ahead and peel the transfer tape off and hope that the honeycomb stays stuck, which they should. I've done all my normal routine here to stick them down really well. Oh, side note that you didn't see earlier, definitely make sure that you wash the bottle or wash your surface you're applying to really well and dry it. Make sure there's no finger oils or anything on it that is just nice, clean, and ready so the vinyl has the best chance of sticking to it. I probably also should have emptied the water I'm drinking out of the bottle, but it didn't seem to affect anything weight-wise when it's on its side, so no big deal. So here I'm going to get the other images that aren't as important to me in set locations. I'm actually changing my mind. I had these set to, to be in this layout and now I've decided that I want the freedom of putting them in different locations because my home honeycomb did not end up exactly where it was supposed to. So I just am going to apply these, all of the black vinyl separately. So the B and then the words. This makes it a bit easier. So you have more freedom. So basically I changed my design a little bit after cutting it. That is okay. We're going to take off the, the vinyl backing. And decide where I want to line it up here. I had intended for it to be below the honeycomb on the front. 
Let's see here. This is not working for me and I'm going to go ahead and cut these two words apart as well. So I could have hindsight is 2020 could have just used less black vinyl and not had the images attached so they would all just cut out next to each other, but that's okay. I have so much black vinyl laying around that it's no big deal to have a little bit wasted. So I'm starting with just the word kind. And I'm going to do one at a time. Because I think I'm going to have better luck here sticking them down and not accidentally overlapping over honeycomb or off the bottom of the bottle or having air bubbles. So working on attaching vinyl to a round surface like a bottle, it is easier to have your pieces cut up more than to have one large design. Like it is on a flat surface, it's a lot easier to, to have more attached pieces you're applying. So here I'm just going to add the word B. I'm just eyeballing it, not looking for perfection, not lining it up level with the other word, but I think I did an okay job with that. No one's going to be coming by analyzing your bottles, don't worry. If things are a little off, that's okay. So here we're going to go to our last decal we made, which is the B. Oops, so that is why I like to flip it over. Again, just a lot more success peeling the white off and peeling from the transfer tape. There we go. So there's our little bee friend. And let's look at the empty space we have left on our bottle to work with. You definitely can make this easier process by um, propping something on the table on both sides of your bottle so it's not moving around. But I'm working on limited time here of when my baby and toddler are asleep. So I was just going for it without thinking too clearly. So in hindsight, I should have lined those up. So did not make it all the way to the end of baby nap, but that's okay. So we're gonna have some baby toes here with us as we finish scraping on that last image. So that is the bee that I picked just from Cricut Design Space Images and where it ended up. I luckily ended up with the perfect space on the other side of the bottle after doing my honeycomb. That it fits right in. So that's where we'll put it. So this is the scraper that came in that Target um, dollar section tools that eerily look very similar to Cricut tools but work for now. Well who knows what box mine are in being stored. Let's see where we're going to peel it up from here. Normally I try to not have the transfer tape go on images we already had stuck on there. But luckily this was not the most sticky tape and it didn't affect any of the vinyl we already had laid down. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this with my little assistant. She is actually fascinated by the shininess of the honeycomb. Which is why she is just in awe staring here. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of push on a couple little bubbles. Make sure everything's stuck on there nicely. Um, definitely recommend hand washing only. It just keeps your design on there well, especially since I didn't cut out or weld in those honeycomb, but here it is. So here's from all sides, and I am in love with my bottle. Go ahead and hit subscribe and join me for our next project.